Hello and welcome back to episode 6 of our Laravel to-do app tutorial series. If you haven't seen our first 5 episodes, be sure to check those out before you go on through this video because you'll need to have those previous episodes to build on top of what we currently have. So thanks for coming back. To recap what we've done so far, we are currently able to create new tasks and we will display them on our homepage and they have a com little complete button here but this complete button doesn't currently do anything. So in this episode, I wanted to actually walk you through the process of a way that we can actually mark these tasks as completed. What I'd like to do is show you a little bit more of the artisan command that we've been using quite a bit of. Let's take a look at what we have available in the artisan make namespace. So what we've done is we've created a controller, uh, we've created a migration, and we've also created a model. What I wanna do is I wanna create another migration but this time, instead of creating a table from scratch, I want to actually modify an existing table that we have. In this case, I'm going to modify our task table. So to do that, I could just do PHP artisan make migration. And what do I want to do? So I want to add completed to our task table. So now I can see that I've modified again our database folder and our migrations table or our migrations folder, I'm sorry, and I've added a new file here. You can see that VS Code is adding green dots for uh, directories that have been modified, and this U symbol is an untracked file. So before we create anything, let me show you what we currently have. These are our four columns in our database uh, on our task table. So we have an ID column, a description column, where we're, just, where we're restoring the description of our task, and two different timestamp columns. What I want to do is I want to add another timestamp column and that column is going to be uh, nullable. So first off, let's create a new timestamp column and it's going to be called completed at. Using the same naming structure we have on uh, created at and updated at, those are both timestamp columns. So let's use the completed at uh, naming structure and we can say that this one is going to be nullable. So for our previous migration that we made where we created our, our task table, uh, what we're doing on the down method, so when the, the migration runs, this is the up method. So this is what actually runs when the migration runs, but we also have version control for our database essentially. So when we go down a step, we will drop our task table. But however, I don't want to drop our entire table when we run back or if we roll back our migrations. So what I want to do is I just want to drop um, drop a column instead, instead of dropping the entire table. We could just pass an array with a single item called uh, completed at. And this is the column that we want to uh, drop when we run our down or our rollback migration. So to show you how that works, let me just run our migration. And we can see that we ran a single migration where we add complete to task table. And now within our database, if I hit refresh on our structure, I can see we have a new column called completed at. And just like updated at and created at, it is also nullable. So let's refresh our content tab. And we can see that we also have two null values for both of our existing tasks currently. But I just wanted to show you what a rollback would do. So if we run php artisan migrate roll back we can step back on our previous migration so if i go to our structure tab i can see that our completed at field is no longer there if i run migrate again i can see that we have it back i can also see all the migrations that have run on our migrations table so they'll run in batches so any migrations that have not run at all will be batched up and they'll all be run sequentially using the timestamps on the migration tables, uh, but they'll all be run in a single batch. Okay, so onto what we were trying to accomplish here. Now I wanna mark a task as completed. So how can I do that? On our task view, we have a link here, and this link is currently going nowhere. It just has a placeholder hash symbol there. So what I wanna do is I wanna, first off, show you that we have access to the ID of our task. If I did task.id and just refresh what we have, if I just refresh what we have currently, we should see that we have our ID of our task. How can we use our task ID? So we're currently doing a get request 
to retrieve items from our database or from our application. And we are currently using post to create methods. So what should we use to actually update our resources? What should we use to update each task and to mark it as completed? Well, if we use the word, if we use the resource of patch, we can actually update the representations. But how can we perform a patch request? Well, if we want to take a look at what we currently have available on our API, on our web API, we can say PHP artisan uh, routes list. And this will list all of the routes, sorry, PHP artisan route list. And this will list all of the routes that we currently have available on our API. So we're doing a post to tasks. So that's what we're using to create or store our uh, new tasks. And what should we do for uh, updating a single task? So using the RESTful architectural style, I want to actually use patch. I've decided to use patch to update our single task. To do that, let's start by adding a new route to our routes file. Let's handle all patch requests to our single task. So when we send an update request, we're going to be performing a patch. We're going to be sending an HTTP patch request to a specific task. And using this curly brace syntax, we can specify that we have a essentially a wild card here for we can send an any ID and that'll mark that ID or that task within that ID as completed. So how do we perform a patch request? Well, let's start by wrapping each link in a form. This form isn't going to be stylized. You're going to see that this is just a submit button. So we're going to convert this into a submit and we can get rid of the href because it's no longer a link and the input type will be submit. Let's take a look. Okay, so it's submitting that form. This form isn't going anywhere because we're not specifying an action. We're gonna actually specify that we're gonna to post uh, to our task route and we're going to pass in that task ID that we were taking a look at earlier. But however, our method is going to have to be a post. And why is that? Using the standard HTTP specifications, you can't actually send a patch request. So to handle that, uh, what Laravel does is it allows you to spoof HTTP requests. We can use spoofing to specify a non-get or post method. So inside of our form, we can say at method, and we're going to do a patch. Let's take a look at that now. Let's refresh. Let's actually, before we go on, let's inspect what we have currently. So if we take a look at our form using uh, inspect element, we can see that we have an actual, a normal form, a standard form using a post method, and we're posting to our tasks route, and we're specifying that we're going to be using the ID of two. But if you look closer, we can see that we have a hidden input, and using this underscore method name, uh, we're going to be using the value of patch. So Laravel is going to convert this request from post into patch. So our web.php route is going to actually handle this as a patch request. If I refresh it one more time and just click on complete, let's see what happens. Okay, so we're actually supposed to also send along a uh, CSRF input. So I'll have to refresh it one more time. So we'll see that our task controller update method does not currently exist and that's perfect because we haven't actually created it yet. So now let's actually create that update method that it's looking for. So below, actually let's delete this task variable in our store method because that's not actually being used. And we can delete some of these comments here. So we are already creating a task and we're handling the task submission data. Uh, we're displaying a list of tasks, and this is where we're currently at, is I wanna actually mark a task as completed. So as we saw here, we're using the update method. So I just wanna actually create that method. So public function, update. And how do I update this? Well, like I said, we're getting that variable of ID. So I'm gonna pass that through here into our method and I can say let's just try fetching that task to make sure they're actually getting the correct task so I can say task equals task so using our task model 
task where ID is ID, and then we'll say first. So I could return our task, and we could use die dump, the Laravel helper method that we went through in a previous video, and I can pass through our task variable. I would expect now to see the die dump value of our task. I can refresh the form that we sent through, and perfect, it looks like we're re receiving that task correctly. So now that we're able to die dump this task, that means that we're actually correctly receiving it. So let's try and update it now. To mark our task as completed, we could just say task completed at, and using another Laravel helper, we can say now. And then we would have to save it. Let's see how that works. So first off, let's open up our database. I wanna see what our task looks like, and I'll refresh what we have currently. And then I'm gonna go back, refresh our index here, and I'm gonna mark this task as completed. Okay, so we're still seeing that die dump value, that's fine, but I wanna refresh our database and see what that looks like. Okay, great, we're actually marking our task as completed. So now that we're actually saving our completed information about our task, let's actually just redirect back to the home page after we've completed a task. Instead of die dumping this task, we could just return a redirect as we're doing here in our store method. So after a task is created, we're redirecting back home. Let's redirect back to the root route. So if I click on complete, we should basically just see this refresh. We're not gonna see anything change. Okay, and why is this happening? Well, we're not seeing anything change because we're not actually handling uh, what a completed task should look like. We're not differentiating between our tasks. So inside of our task model, I'm going to actually create a new method. So I'm gonna call it public. We're gonna basically return a Boolean. So I'm gonna say is completed. So I'm creating a new method called is completed, and this is gonna return a Boolean about whether or not our current task is completed. We get to work with each row in our database table of tasks as we would any other object. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna return this completed at is not equal to null. So if a task is completed, if a task is completed, it's going to be not null. And if a task is not completed, it will be null. So I wanna identify which tasks have been completed. So back on the bootstrap documentation website, I wanna look at our components. And the one I wanna look at in particular, in this case, is a badge. So let me just copy in this code. So it's a span with a class of badge and badge-secondary. And let's take a look. So if a task, I can, using the blade if directive, I can say if this task is completed, or end if. And we can just say completed. However, I want to style it just a little bit differently, and we can use uh, success. So that'll be a success. It'll be marked green. It should be marked green if it has been completed. So let's refresh this page again. Oh, it looks like I had a typo here. So if I refresh that page, it looks like I'm having an error. And if I, it looks like I just need to ref update this. Instead of using this, we're using task. So that's our variable that we're using. So I could just hit refresh and there we go. So we're seeing that it's marked as completed and I could move this above our task description. And that looks okay to me. And actually, let me just bring it into this paragraph. Okay, perfect. So now I'm able to see that this task has been completed. Uh, let me make this button a block. So that it should stretch all the way across. And if our task has been completed, we should no longer need a complete button anymore. So I'll say if not task uh, is completed. So if our task is not completed, and allow the user to complete it. 
Perfect. So we're no longer seeing that complete button on completed task. And let's try completing this task. Let's see what happens. Great. So it just happens automatically because it's local and it's happening really quickly. So let me just try adding in a new task and see how that looks. So I'll say this is another task. And let's create one more. And actually, let's just try adding one more. Task number three. So my goal is to see the completed tasks at the bottom and have our not completed task appear at the top. So what happens if I complete that? Well, we're seeing that it's a, we're seeing a mixed result here. So I'm seeing uncompleted tasks mixed up with completed tasks, and it's not very clear which ones I need to work on. So let me take a look a bit and see what we can do here. So we're currently ordering by a descending results of our ID, and the largest IDs are at the top, meaning the, the ones that were most recently created are gonna appear at the top of the list. However, we're not taking into account our tasks that have been completed. Let's try adding in another sorting method here. So if I do um, order by uh, completed at, let's try that. Let's see how that looks. Well, that's not doing anything. So if I bring this up here, let's try um, ordering by completed at first. Let's see how that looks. Okay, great. Now we're seeing our uncomplete tasks at the top and our completed tasks are appearing at the bottom. So if I actually, I could actually sort this differently um, by using descending or if I want to see our completed task appear at the top, those will appear at the top, and then our uncompleted tasks are at the bottom. But I do want to use the default ascending sorting. But if I could, I could also just remove that as well, and I get the same results. And I prefer to do that because it keeps the things just a little bit cleaner. Um, let me actually add in a little bit different styling before we go. Within our card documentation, let's take a look at what Bootstrap gives us here. And I'm gonna actually use one of these stylings down here. So this looks like a nice one, the success card. So inside of our task index, I could also add in more blade inside of our card class. And I could just say, if task is completed, and I could just add it in here. I can say card, what's the, what's the code here? What's the class that I need? So card, uh, border dash success. So border dash success. And that should add in uh, green styling for our completed task. So I can actually get rid of this badge now because I no longer need it. Refresh that. Okay, so these are completed and these are pending. So now this looks pretty good so far. So we can see that our tasks have been completed and we can see our incomplete pending task here as well. So that looks pretty good for now. If you wanna see the code that we've done so far throughout this course, be sure to check out the GitHub link profile down below. Uh, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and leave a comment down below letting us know what you think about it so far. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes in this series. Thanks for watching guys, bye-bye.